The Phlebotomy Textbook, Chapter 15, Ethical and Legal Issues. Principles of Right and Wrong are a code of ethics that provide you with personal and professional rules of performance and moral behavior that you should follow. Some agencies that have written a code of ethics are the American Society of Clinical Pathology, the American Society for Clinical Laboratory Science, and the National Phlebotomy Association. It is wise to avoid unprofessional social media posts that would break the code of ethics. There is an established ethical standard of conduct included in the Medical Code of Ethics. One, first, do no harm. Second, respect patients' rights. Third, perform duties in a manner consistent with the approved standards of care. Fourth, enhance your knowledge and apply new techniques. Fifth, demonstrate a commitment to the profession and coworkers. There is a patient's bill of rights which is a document which lists what a patient should expect while in your care. You should have respect for your patients. Always maintain a safe environment. Only collect blood with consent of a patient. A patient has the right to refuse treatment. Maintain a patient's confidentiality. You will have to deal with angry, unhappy patients. Treat them with respect and consideration. However, if a patient is abusive to you, then you should report this to the nursing staff. You cannot collect blood from someone who may harm you. If you are pinched, hit, kicked, or harmed in any way, then you must report this to your supervisor. You should not make a patient uncomfortable, but they should also not make you feel unsafe. If a patient asks you to tell them what the purpose of the testing that is being done is, refer them to their healthcare provider. The physician should answer questions about what tests are for and what the results mean. You should not discuss this with the patient as you are not qualified to do so. The patient has a right to refuse to have blood drawn. Do not try to force anyone to have their blood drawn. Notify nursing staff that the patient refused and note this in their record. Patient's test results are confidential confidential and must not be discussed with anyone who is not directly involved in the patient's care. Do not discuss patient information in hallways, elevators, in the cafeteria, or other public places where people may overhear. Do not transmit any patient-related information or image via electronic media that would violate confidentiality, privacy, or degrade or embarrass the patient. Do not take photos at work, especially where patients or patient information might be in the image. This may cost you your job and may violate the law if the patient information was shared. Only patients, providers, or the patient may be given laboratory test results. All facilities will have procedures for patients to access their results. Make sure you follow them. Do not give results to family or friends. The American Hospital Association updated the Patient Bill of Rights to the Patient Care Partnership. The purpose was to provide the patient with information that was in plain, straightforward language. The patient should expect high quality care, a clean, safe environment to be involved in their care. Their privacy should be protected and will help. Uh, what kind of help will be provided in understanding how to care, uh, continue care after the patient is sent home and how to get help with paying their bills and filing insurance claims. Ethics are recommended standards of contact while medical laws are required standards. Criminal law is enacted at the local, state, or national levels. A criminal lawsuit is an action initiated by the state for committing an illegal act against the public welfare and can be punishable by imprisonment. A civil lawsuit is a court action between parties seeking monetary compensation for an offense. A tort is a wrongful act committed by one person against another that causes harm to the person or his or her property. Torts are classified as intentional and unintentional. Assault, battery, and defamation are considered intentional torts. 
negligence and malpractice are considered unintentional torts. Assault is the threat of touching another person without his or her consent and with the intention of causing fear or harm. For example, if a phlebotomist threatens to hold a person down in order to draw his or her blood without consent, this is assault. Battery is the actual harmful touching of another person without his or her consent. An example would be if a phlebotomist physically restrained a patient without consent, they would be committing a battery. Defamation is spoken or written words that can injure a person's reputation. These are divided into libel, which is false defamatory writing that is published, and slander, which is false and malicious spoken word. Note that both are when you lie about somebody. Invasion of privacy is a violation of the patient's right to be left alone and the right to be free from unwanted exposure to public view. Release of confidential information is considered an invasion of privacy. Entering a patient's room without asking permission may be considered a physical intrusion and an invasion of privacy. All information acquired through the care of a patient must be kept confidential and given only to health professionals who have a medical need to know. Test results should not be released without permission. While all test results are covered by this requirement, some are more sensitive, such as a drug or alcohol screening or an HIV test. The Health Information Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, was enacted in 1996. It protects workers with pre-existing conditions from losing their insurance when they change jobs. It provides easier detection of fraud and abuse. It reduces paperwork by requiring electronic data transactions. It guarantees the privacy of individuals' health information. Even before HIPAA, healthcare workers were legally required to respect the confidentiality of patient information. The Health Information Technology Economic and Clinical Health Act was adopted to expand security protection under HIPAA and provide more legal enforcement for non-compliance. This act created standards for electronic transmission of protected health information. It offered monetary incentives for implementing electronic medical records and imposed rigid violation and reporting requirements. The healthcare worker is legally responsible to protect the confidentiality of the patient or healthcare provider communications, verbal statements, chart, and laboratory results. Malpractice is misconduct or lack of skill by a healthcare professional that results in injury to a patient. A successful malpractice suit provides the existence proves, sorry, the existence of negligence, which is defined as failure by the healthcare provider to give reasonable care. There are four factors that must be proven to claim negligence. First is duty, meaning there is a standard of care and that it was not followed. Second is breach of duty. The healthcare provider knew or should have known that this failure would cause harm. Third is that the breach of duty directly caused the injury and that no other factors could have contributed. Fourth is damages. There must be actual physical, emotional, or financial harm that occurred to the patient because of the negligent act. This is a list of some examples of phlebotomist negligence. The most common phlebotomy event that can initiate litigation is nerve injury hemorrhage from an accidental arterial puncture or inadequate pressure to a vein after collection, drawing from an inappropriate location such as the same side as a mastectomy, injury occurring when a patient faints, death of a patient caused by misidentification of a patient or specimen and wrong diagnosis or mistreatment of a patient due to specimen collection errors. A patient must give consent before any procedure, and the type of consent depends on the type of procedure that is being performed. Informed consent requires that the healthcare professional explain what the medical procedure is, how it is to be performed, including possible risk and expected result. 
You must use plain language so that the patient can understand you. Express consent is required primarily for invasive procedures, but can include phlebotomy. The patient is also informed and then consent is usually done in writing, but verbal consent can be documented in the chart. Implied consent is very common in blood collection. When a patient presents for an outpatient phlebotomy and presents their arm for collection, they are giving implied consent. Consent for minors or incapacitated patients is given by their guardians. Some, some states require extra consent for HIV testing. The phrase respondent superior means let the master answer. This means that the employers are responsible for their own acts of negligence as well as the acts of their employees. If you perform a procedure that you are not trained for, you and your employer will be held liable. In the laboratory, all personnel must be competency assessed when hired and periodically thereafter. If a phlebotomist does not properly identify a patient and gives a sample that is mislabeled to the blood bank, it can cause a fatal hemolytic transfusion reaction. Giving a patient the wrong blood type can lead to death or acute renal failure and lengthy treatments. Another example would be that the phlebotomist performs a venipuncture at an excessive angle. The phlebotomist might dig for a vein or accidentally puncture an artery. If a blood vessel seems to have a pulse, then you should not use this vessel as it is an artery. A patient could have nerve damage or have a large hematoma and lose function of their arm. If a phlebotomist assists a patient out of bed to go to the bathroom and they fall, this would be a breach of duty because this is not their job. Another example of breach of duty is the phlebotomist does not place a patient who states that they are likely to faint in a reclining chair or bed. This may cause the patient to fall and hit their head and split it open. The risk management department will have policies and procedures in place to protect patients and employees. They must identify risk, determine policies and procedures to prevent risk, educate employees, patients and visitors, and evaluate changes to make sure the improvements work. The risk management department will require that incident reports are filed and evaluated. New policies and procedures are continually developed and instituted in response to incident. To prevent medical errors, the Joint Commission has established sentinel event policies. A sentinel event is defined as an unexpected occurrence involving death or serious physical or psychological injury or the risk thereof. When a sentinel event occurs, a report must be written for the Joint Commission. Some examples of sentinel events are abduction of infants, assault, rape, homicide, fall-related events, hemolytic transfusion reactions due to patient misidentification, medication errors, patient suicides, or procedural complications due to patient misidentification. Some other sentinel events include delay in treatment. If you think of people with cancer who don't start treatment early enough to survive would be an example. The unanticipated full-term death of an infant, leaving a foreign body inside of a patient after surgery or completing a surgery on the incorrect site or side of the body. A sentinel event report will include the following information, the event, the root cause of the event, and a plan of action to prevent such an event from happening again. Thank you, this concludes this lecture.